It's that time again. It's time for another Saturday night special where we talk about everything rock hounding related. Hope you're having a fabulous week, everybody. I had a very, very relaxing couple of days up at a beautiful fire lookout with Sarah. And uh, it's nice to peel away from the rock hounding world, even, uh, you know, just temporarily. No rock hounding was done. Just some uh, pure relaxation. Excellent views up there, and uh, it's, it's, it's fantastic. Fantastic. I love a good fire lookout. Um, you know, but when you're up there, there's not a whole lot to do. So uh, I, did, I did some reading and uh, some, some pondering of things and such. And uh, I think it's... Uh, I've, I have a couple of things that I want to show you and mention this evening. You know, one thing that has came to mind a great deal over the years as I think about what I'm doing here, um, a big portion of what I do is take big, complex topics, right? I will get into them. I will read everything there is to read. And I'm good at distilling it down and communicating complex subject matter in a very digestible format. I by no means uh, could ever do the topic of uranium and thorium justice in a video, but I can uh, like produce a video version of uh, like cliff notes, <laughs> which I, I think is valuable. I think, you know, um, anybody that wants to buy literature, um, having somebody else dip their toes and kind of uh, say, hey, this is worth reading is important in my opinion. And I, you know, I, I value it. Uh, when I see other people doing it. Well, one thing that has piqued my interest as of late a great deal, it's not actually Uranium and Thorium, although that is a great topic and that is a great book. Um, two things. Um, I love, I love micromounting, all right? I do the process of appreciating, enjoying, preserving, mounting, Tiny, tiny minerals for enjoyment under the microscope. I love it. Love it. One thing that I enjoy particularly about this book on micromounting is there is a chapter in the beginning of this um, about, like, the history of it, right? Um, you know, uh, it's, it's fascinating to be able to, uh, I don't know, I guess see the hobby through the, the lens of the past. I've learned so much by reading things like this. I've learned so much in the 10 episodes of our podcast, the previously Rock Hunting podcast. I've learned so much about the 70s, rock hounding, lapidary, all of it. Like, uh, it's... You, we here as rock hounds, lapidaries, mineral collectors, do not have much of a history to speak of. And that is a problem. Think of all the other hobbies or sport. Um, it has very well-defined history. The history of rock hounding, lapidary, mineral collecting is muddy. Very, very muddy. Um, I recently picked up this book, The History of Mineral Collecting, to help give me a better grasp on the history of this thing that we do. Uh, this particular uh, issue of the mineralogical record, um, it's the history of mineral collecting, 1530 to 1799. Man, um, this would be impossible to replicate. I could not replicate this if I tried. Um, a lot of things in it have been translated from other languages. You know, the really the, the origin of mineral collecting as we might know it today really started in Europe. So a lot of things are in Spanish, French, German, and uh, that's quite the, <laughs> quite the barrier to learn about unless somebody else does the heavy lifting. I really want to try to find some history related uh, material that's more like 19th century um, as far as rock hunting mineral collecting goes. And maybe I, I will turn, turn that up here in the future. 
one thing that unifies these books is they're written by people that are excellent, excellent communicators. And since I spend so much time trying to communicate with others, either through video or email or text or what, you know, whatever the format is, Instagram, <laughs> um, I try to think of ways that I can refine the process of communicating about rocks and minerals. And I think that is important to uh, have good communication skills. One thing that comes up often, very, very often, in the rock counting and lapidary world is identification. Now, I think most people do not actually identify rocks. Um, people recognize them and then like, like a, a, a reference table in your brain, you have a word that matches up with like a picture <laughs> and you connect those two, uh, those, those two uh, cells there and sure enough, you have a uh, a, a name for something, but you're not really going through the steps of identification. Um, it is a time consuming process and it is valuable because it allows you to apply more mm, words of recognition to, to an object. Um, so, I mean, some of you might recognize this as an agate. That's fine. We can just end it there. No, you know, other things necessary to, uh, apply it to this. You could just be like, agate. Right? Agate? Look at that. Look at that agate. Okay. We could refine that over, you know, different procedures of identification and, uh, you know, primarily the location. Location being key. Um, in this case, it is Brazil. Uh, this being a Brazilian agate. Right there. Uh, that just conjured up many pictures in, in people's minds. As I said, Brazilian agate. Um, we have lots of parallax banding in this. Well, most likely, I can kind of see it there. So I think this would be an excellent piece to use in a future video for a project. So I think one of the biggest faults, or the biggest Maybe it's not a fault. One of the biggest problems I see in Rock County today is Facebook. How many times can I kick this dead horse? <laughs> um, Facebook is a blessing and a curse. 90% um, of the way people utilize Facebook Rock County groups is flawed and counterproductive. And it should, it, should, it should go away, in my opinion. I believe that it has led people to think that a mere photo of a rock or mineral is enough to identify it. I don't believe that's the case. It is enough to recognize it, not identify it. I have seen my fair share <laughs> of uh, blurry photos and the like, and I can tell you right now, purely a photo, oftentimes taken in poor light, is not enough. Not enough to identify, barely enough to recognize. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Why not throw in like a, 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 a kick to the teeth to uh, Facebook? <laughs> well, um, I received a rock in the mail this past week from Cliff, and uh, it is quite, quite the interesting piece. What we have here is a piece of obsidian. He did not state in his letter where the obsidian originates from i want to say that it is uh well it's not 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 from here but you can kind of see can we focus we'll put some photos in we'll put some photos in of that um it is an interesting piece of obsidian and it's very colorful but the color is not really the thing that i am very interested in i am interested in these tiny speck inclusions um this is not something that i recognize whatsoever under the microscope i'm not a big obsidian guy like it's not something i have rock counted for a lot read a lot about studied a lot i really honestly know nothing of what I, i'm looking at here um 
Although, uh, I think with enough time and research, I could figure out what these inclusions are. You know, the, the thing that is critical to that identification process is exact GPS of the find. So, um, this didn't occur in an isolated bubble all by its lonesome. Um, somebody out there retrieved it from the earth and without that location, which is most likely well known, it makes it quite difficult to, uh, I guess, yeah, figure out what these mineral inclusions are. Many of the things that I go and collect, even if I don't know, I, I have things in my collection. I have no idea. I self-collected them. No clue what they are. Uh, they sit in containers or bags with the GPS location of where it was acquired. And maybe at a later date, I will be able to uh, go back and do some research on it. Figure out what it is, you know. Um, this past week, a couple of things. Uh, going out to Puff Falls was fun, although it might be a slight bit... Um, unproductive we're not big into the creeks what can i say we're not big into the creeks but even these uh older finds are are quite pretty in my opinion we did find some other stuff and uh you know uh it it, it was good it's good to go back to localities that you haven't been to in a very very long time and uh see it with your more educated eyes you know we also cut some petrified wood, which was a lot of fun. And uh, who doesn't love some petrified wood? I believe uh, this piece right here, um, with its black appearance, um, the black being carbon, um, I'm thinking about bleaching that out, and maybe that can be its own separate thing in the future, um, testing out that process. Lots of people will talk about bleaching petrified wood, um, but or other chemical processes to uh, remove the black appearance. Um, maybe we'll test some of those things. I think that could be, uh, I think that could be pretty, pretty interesting. So yeah, um, this coming week, we start heading down into Oregon, doing some good, good rock hounding. It's going to be a lot of fun. Got a lot of cool videos already shot, edited, and waiting in the can, ready to go. Well, I think we're going to leave this one here, everybody. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. If you're new here, if you like uh, dropping me a thumbs up or subscribe, much appreciate it. It is like the surface of the sun out here in the shop right now. We are pushing up on 100 degrees. So I think I'm going to call this one wraps and uh, I'll catch you in the next video.